What's going on folks? Hope you're having a wonderful night or day. Today we're going to be talking about the collection of information I was able to gather from the various social media platforms for Amble Empires. Most of this is going to consist of information from the Steam discussions alongside the Reddit and Discord. However, there is some not so hidden information in the Anvil Discord announcement section. If you scroll back far enough, you can see some patch notes for the closed test they've been having for Anvil Empires for the past two years. Now I did reach out to the developers to ask if I could use this information. It is in a public channel, but you never know. They did reply and say that although it's not preferred that I use it to describe what the current iteration of the game is going to be like, if we wanted to, we could talk about it a little bit, but it would be good to point out that some of, if not most of that information is out of date. So when we get to the patch notes section, and I'm not going to go over all of it, just make sure to take that stuff with a grain of salt. So let's start off with the quick detail about the map that we're going to be using in pre-alpha. Instead of going by the Caligo concept map we talked about in the previous video, it was mentioned on Discord that we're actually going to be using the map that was below it in the developer blog that we talked about when it came to the R2 engine. So of course it sounds like it'll be bigger than what they were describing Foxhole had in its first pre-alpha, where they confirmed that that pre-alpha only started out in a single region. Now we do have some really good information that came out of the Steam discussions. These are all developer answers, official and hopefully up to date information. Here's what they said when someone asked about the combat, and also keep in mind that this is in the FAQ. Right now when you engage in combat in any way, you will enter combat mode which restricts your movement. In early close tests, they found that combat amounted to players running around in circles trying to use hit and run tactics which obviously didn't work. So they experimented with a few mechanics, but ultimately what worked was adding in combat mode and a sprint mechanic so that combat was resolved swiftly without it amounting to players running around each other. The sprint mechanic is used to close the distance before the enemy can escape and is the choice to engage in combat, but once engaged, it's very difficult to run away. The next step was adding in a basic mechanic to make players actually group together. They added in a shield wall mechanic where players holding up their shields and standing next to each other will have a stronger guard, which is badass by the way. The goal is to make combat strategic and not twitch based so logistics slash group formations etc are far more important than your aim or timing of your attack. The current version of combat is functional but unpolished. It's also missing a lot of depth that they intend to add in the future. As an example, Foxhole's first version of combat didn't have weapon stability or cover. Anvil combat is at a similar stage, but they'd argue even more primitive. The next thing, what have they said about progression? Most progression will be tied to your settlement, relationships, and what you've done in the world. There will be no traditional personal progress as you see in many MMORPGs. There are already a lot of games with that style of progression, which is great, but they want to focus on organic sandbox elements and cooperation over things like levels and stack grind. Sorry to those of us that were thinking that we might be able to specialize in making the best gear in the game. From what I was reading here and on Discord, it doesn't seem based around quality per se, but more about quantity. Also, when we were talking about formations earlier, I really hope they add in Testudo and other ones. They really need to. I can't remember what discussion this was from, but they actually confirmed that alliances will be a thing in the game. It's possible that they'll loosen up the constraint over time, but they want to ensure that the game was focused on large-scale conflicts instead of small tribal warfare like you see in MIDI survival games. And just to clarify, of course I don't think they're talking about alliances between factions, but alliances between clans within a faction. The next one is about decay mechanics. Someone asked about this in one of the discussions. There will be decay mechanics as there will always need to be some upper limit to the number of entities the server can simulate and send over the network to players. However, their goal is to limit decay to the bare minimum of what's needed for server performance. Since the R2 engine can handle a very large number of entities, they're hoping to find a reasonable balance there. Also, just as a quick tidbit, Anvil Empire's server runs on the custom engine R2, but the client itself actually runs on Unreal, from what they've said previously. So as far as ships go, because I know there's going to be some people excited about that, myself included, in the early pre-alpha builds, you'll already be able to build small boats with three seats for players. They intend to have large ships in the future, and seafaring will be, of course, a big part of the game. As far as the settlement building goes, they confirm that Anvil's settlement building will be quite different from Foxhole's logistics, so it's difficult to compare the two. Yourself and or a group of players will be able to build a settlement and have a decent amount of control over its access, but you'll need to open it up to allow player reinforcements to defend your settlement during a siege. And then as far as the pre-alpha itself goes, this is the last one. The pre-alpha will begin in April. It will be free and anyone is free to sign up, but entry will be limited. But they hope to increase the size of the test group over time. 
Also, just to make sure I say it this time, when they open the signups, we'll be doing it through their Discord, unless otherwise instructed. So be sure to keep tabs on that in the announcement section. So before we get down to the next section, one part of the FAQ that I wanted to point out is what kind of gameplay activities can we expect from Anvil Empires? Since the players drive every aspect of the conflict, there will be a wide variety of activities. On the combat side, players will be able to roam the world at sea or on horseback, torch unsuspecting villages and loot them for silver, which there will be a currency by the way, work together with hundreds of players to build a siege camp and siege weaponry. On the non-combat side of things, players will build settlements and grow them from small hamlets to bustling towns shared by dozens if not hundreds of players, and support the war effort through industries like farming, hunting, husbandry, and mining. The response to someone's comment showing concern that clans may inevitably lead to clicks is that it will likely be different from Foxhole, but there's two areas of gameplay they're speculating will be appropriate for players who don't want to join a clan. The first is rear line settlement building. It's going to be more viable in Anvil to build a settlement with just a small group of players, or even solo if you want to, in contrast to how it was before. And the second section is reinforcements gameplay. When there is conflict in the world, players will be able to deploy at any remote settlement or siege camp that has supplies and tents, and when the conflict is over, they can return to their home settlement. They designed the system to hopefully push in the large scale battles, but it will take time to tune it and get it right. So that means we're going to be able to fast travel to different points of interest around the map to get straight into the action without having to travel a long distance. As far as permanent progression, there's no plans for it right now, but anything can change. There's nothing wrong with the concept, but so many games already do this that they'd rather focus on new and unique things. So this might be a touchy subject, but just to explain how Anvil Empires is going to work, these wars and sessions we're going to get in, which is the main gameplay cycle, are likely going to only last a month or more before they reset. Foxhole, from what I was researching, had a system where you did have a military rank that persisted past these different wars that reset, but other than that, there wasn't really anything that you could take with you, for obvious reasons. Some players felt like this wasn't enough to keep you going or allow you to feel like you were building towards something. I think one of the ways Anvil could potentially improve on this, and I want to be clear that this should never be tied to microtransactions in a game like this. Not a season pass, but if there was a system that allowed us to build up towards titles that we could take with us in the game, potentially cosmetics that we could unlock that worked in this way. We don't start off in something that looks incredibly badass right off the bat, but let's say you get to tier four and you craft a piece of armor. Normally that's just going to look like the baseline piece of armor, but what if when you get to a certain rank you can choose to apply a cosmetic skin that you've unlocked to that piece of armor. That way when everybody's starting out you're not spawning in with a cosmetic set that looks like you're fully decked out in armor, and you can still kind of determine what the enemy is wearing based off of what tier they're at. I don't really want to go hard on suggesting that because players might be completely against that. That's why I'd be curious to know what your guys' thoughts on a system like that might be. Do you think that might be a little bit more of an incentive if you were able to, and again, it wouldn't be tied to microtransactions, if you were able to unlock cosmetics over time by just playing the game over and over and reaching certain ranks, and then you could apply those cosmetic skins to certain regular gear that you have to actually craft and wear in the game. And of course, the cosmetics would have to make sense for the theme of the game and time period. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was the patch notes for the closed test that I mentioned previously before. Now, like I said, this is public information in the Discord if you just scroll up in the announcements channel, but some of this detail is from up to two to three years ago and is probably vastly different from what we'll see now. But there were a couple of things that I did want to point out. On November 13th, they had a small note in there confirming that back then at least they had swords and bows as combat weapons. On November 26th, they had notes about the available buildings, lumber mills, larders, and farms, alongside javelins being a weapon back then. On November 27th, they mentioned the farm crop wheat alongside swords and spears. March 17th of 2021, we got a small picture of a carriage and mention of the features caravans, mines, camps, armors, and more. April 30th, they mentioned helmets, body armor, and battering rams. On May 5th of 2021, hunting food, berries, stone, and iron are mentioned resources. And lastly, the most important one that I saw in there, on September 9th of 2022, at the very bottom of this note, in the cheat sheet, the following resources are mentioned, which give us a little bit of an idea of what we might see. Boar meat, deer meat, clay, coal, cabbage seeds, and wheat. Again, I want to reiterate, and I cannot stress this enough, that was for old closed tests, likely different or expanded now, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of a benchmark of what we might expect as far as resources go. Hopefully this helps to answer some questions. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments below. Have a great night or day, folks. Farewell.